Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. My name is Dylan Love, and you're watching the Engine Room Podcast brought to you by TokenMetrics.com. Uh, today, we're going to talk to Jacob as we have many other times in the past, but we're going to open it up a little bit and get to know Jacob a little personally about what it's like to be a 21-year-old college student who is not only a full-time student, but also has a full-time job working for a crypto company called Token Metrics. Jacob, thanks for talking to us a little bit about your life today. Yeah, of course. Happy to be here. So uh, let's get this out there. You're, you're, uh, you're in your senior year at USC. Yep. You are not only working with us every day uh, at Token Metrics, but you're also plugged into the college crypto scene there. You were talking to me a little bit about something called Trojan DAO. And I'm, I guess I'm also wondering, uh, what, what's the crypto vibe like among your peers at school? People are certainly aware of it, but is it, is it a lot of people? Is it only a few people? What do you think? Yeah, so I think it's definitely a minority of students who are really into crypto, but I think the vast majority of students at least know what crypto is, could probably name more than just Bitcoin. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's just also a trend with just people my age. Um, like, And I think especially after the pandemic when everyone was locked at home, and there was the the March crash in equities, and then everyone just kind of piled into Robinhood because um, I have a, a lot of close friends who had never invested before, and after 2020, they were putting all their money in all these meme stocks and now crypto too. So I I think it's definitely not surprising that most people in my age and in college know what crypto is and probably hold some crypto as well. So what's the crypto vibe like at USC specifically? I'd love to learn more about Trojan Dow. Yeah, yeah. So I, I obviously I since working in crypto, I've been asking around, talking to people, seeing what what their vibe is like with crypto and I heard of the Trojan Dow and this since we're the USC Trojans, it's 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 a club on campus, but it's also a DAO. Um, and the way they advertised this was at the um, involvement or club fair at the beginning of this semester in August. They they just put a, a put a table out on the main street in campus and just put NFTs question mark. That that was their advertising <laughs> technique, which was actually very <laughs> successful. So um, you got invited to join the the Discord, the Trojan Dow Discord, which I think at this point has one to two hundred members in in the Discord. And then mm -hmm. the way they've they've really built upon it. So there's been um, crypto events and then social events. So for example, I went to an NFT auction, a live NFT auction in Venice Beach with. Trojan Dow. They've also had social events at um, a bar on ca on campus, or just kind of to hang out and really get to know uh, students in the Trojan Dow. Um, and then the way they they are doing membership is each member of the Dow. You have to be an active member, so you have to go to multiple multiple events. Will get a NFT that represents a membership card, which you then after you graduate, you could then sell your NFT to a, a younger student who wants to then now join the Trojan DAO. Um, and the DAO has actually also purchased some NFTs just to hold for the for, for the DAO, almost a, as an assets of the DAO. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very interesting. So it, it, the secret's out. Uh, young people are into crypto at, at colleges just as they are all over the world. Uh, interesting to hear that. Uh, I wonder if you have any interface, does the Trojan DAO have any interface with crypto or blockchain clubs at other universities? I think at this point, no. Okay. I, I, yeah, I think it's, it, it's really just at this point, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a community for USC students to discuss crypto, to dis discuss NFTs. Like there's channels in the discord that say, this is the NFT channel. So people mm -hmm. kind of plug NFTs that they've been looking at. So, so it's, it's also almost as an investment group as well. So how, how soon, if I meet you at a college party, how quickly does crypto come up? If I'm talking to you, hi, I'm Dylan. Nice to meet you. What are you into? Is it yeah. the first thing, the fifth thing? 
it, it's it's definitely probably top three because uh, that uh, obviously token metrics is fascinating. I love working in crypto, so I'm all I'm always talking about it. So I'll be like, they're like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, I actually work at a cryptocurrency research company called Token Metrics, and here's my view on crypto. And then I probably talk people's ear off, probably talk more than I should about crypto. Um, but but yeah, it, it's definitely one of the first things that come up. Gotcha. Uh, oh, I want to remind our audience that you're not only studying finance, you're also studying philosophy. So yes. that you are kind of uniquely positioned to talk about and analyze crypto, I feel like. Yeah. Not only exactly. for the, the, the number side of it, but the thing that's actually what I'm more interested in is like the social implications and kind of what, what does this thing mean versus how much is it worth? I think that's a more interesting question personally, but don't tell anybody in charge here. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. So what, what are your ambitions within crypto? I assume you hold some crypto and trade a little bit. Does it get any more interesting than that? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I've always been a value investor. I'm in hot, I'm a hodler, so I don't really trade whatsoever. Over the pandemic, I did start trading options, which this isn't crypto, but I, I was in, in February, 2020, I bought a bunch of put options on JetBlue, Caesars Entertainment, and all these other stocks that I thought would be affected by by the pandemic. And I turned $200 into $2,400 and then kept playing with options and soon lost it all. Um, and after that, I kind of stopped the, the gambling part of, of investing and really continued on my value investor mindset. So, so all the, all the crypto I own right now, I, I understand and know the value of the projects so that I can make the decision, well, this is a good buy because it's undervalued and I'm going to hold this for years to come because I don't think it's going away. Yeah. Yeah. So how quickly after someone learns you're into crypto, how quickly are they hitting you up for advice on what to buy? Yeah, so I, that that does happen a lot. I'll, I'll say to my friend, my friends will be like, when I'll tell them, oh, like, for example, Audius, I was like, oh, I bought Audius at 50 cents. And now it's after the TikTok partnership, it was trading at $3. Now I think it's mm -hmm. at $2. At that point, I still 4x my money. And they're like, why didn't you tell me about it? I'm like, I did tell you about it. They're like, what's the, what's the next thing going to be? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Let me, let me do my research and I'll get back to yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, what do you foresee? What, like the stuff is still, so the, crypto is kind of old and new at the same time is kind of how I think about this. We've got about uh, 12 years of momentum. If you trace it back to Bitcoin in 2009, um, but despite 12 years of history, it seems like there's still quite a few people that need to learn this stuff. Could you imagine a college, USC, or fill-in-the-blank school offering some kind of crypto course? Or maybe there's like a crypto concentration within finance. Yeah, Does so actually at, at USC, there's, there's a blockchain miner. So you can miner in blockchain and you can take a bunch wow. of classes that teach you blockchain. It's not... It's not I don't think we have a crypto finance class yet. This is more kind of the the coding and under underlying kind of structure of crypto, which is blockchain right now. It's more, I think it's in our engineering school, but yeah, we, we do actually have a blockchain miner. We, we have a, a, a crypto club. So I'm, I'm assuming it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. There's going to be now there's, I, I foresee a, a crypto finance class investing in crypto because next semester I'm taking a class called investments and I wouldn't be surprised in a couple of years that there's going to be investments in crypto as a whole separate class. I mean, yeah, we have none other than Tim Cook joining a chorus of old school money people saying that crypto is part of a well-diversified portfolio. So it seems inevitable that this is something that will be talked about in various finance classes in the near future. Yeah. Um, and and also, I, I on the note of um, our college students into crypto, I actually have a few good friends who are also working at other crypto uh, companies. So I, I can name drop those real quick. Please have, do. Yeah. Yeah. Love to I've, yeah. I have one friend. She's working at a place called Bitski, B-I-T-S-K-I. Bitski is kind of the Shopify of the crypto world, of the NFT markets. So what they do is they partner with 
well-known companies to create NFT drops. They design the website where people can go and buy these NFT related drops that are, that are, that are kind of on brand with these companies. So they've partnered with Adidas, WWE and other major brands. So, so that was cool, super cool to learn from her what Bitsky does. And she, she was, um, we, we had a great discussion about Cardano because she did not like Cardano. And I, I'm a huge proponent of Cardano. And I know Cardano's very split as I see mm-hmm. when I'm doing research, looking on Reddit, looking on Twitter. Pe- some people hate Cardano and some people love Cardano. Um, and I think that was, I was experience, experiencing that in real life. Um, then I also have a very close friend who is actually the CEO of a crypto company. He created a company called Doge Drip, um, which is mm. a clothing and merch store that turns crypto into real products. So one example is they actually just partnered with Slim Jim to create Doge X Slim Jim shirts, hats, and other merch. Um, so, th- so he's really kind of fueling the fire behind meme coins, behind Doge. They also have Doge Beans Coffee, which has obviously the Doge meme printed on. These the are physical products. These are physical products, so you can yeah, you can buy a Slim Jim shirt, which is Slim Jim at the actual brand, uh-huh. Slim Jim branded with the Doge meme on it or a coffee oh, wow. bag with the doge face on it called doge beans. So so yeah, he's very he's taking advantage of the trend um and and yeah, and we and then at the same time when we talk about crypto, he's obviously a huge proponent of meme coins and me as a value investor don't see kind of the worth or value or utility of meme coins. So we've had mm-hmm. a lot of discussions on whether Doge should be worth as much as it as it is, whether Shiba Inu should be, whether meme coins have a space in in the crypto realm. So yeah, we that that's also been very constructive conversations as well. Yeah, very good. What are your favorite sources for information? Maybe you want to throw out some suggested Twitter followers. Uh, excuse me, Twitter follows or Telegram channels. Or maybe just some chatty person who's kind enough to return your emails. Where where are you usually looking for crypto info? Yeah, for sure. So I actually just wrote a blog post on Token Metrics blog about the best crypto telegrams. So one that I really like, it's called Unfolded with a mm-hmm. period at the end. There's 90,000 subscribers into this telegram channel. And it's all it is is crypto, kind of like macro crypto news but it's all in it each thing is one sentence so for example um it's just u.s inflation rose 6.2 percent in in october the highest annual rate in 30 years and that's it then the net then another one is circle launches venture capital fund for early stage bitcoin projects and then there's a link at the end coinbase reports third quarter revenue that misses analysts estimates with a link at the end so it's very short and sweet headlines with a link at the end if obviously, because I, I want to see the link, I want to read the whole article, but it, it's very good. It's from Bloomberg, CNBC. They're, they're very reputable sources. And it's, it's easy to kind of digest when it's just one headline. And then you can say, hey, US inflation rose 6.2% in October, let me look more into this. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so unfolded period. I, I, I really like it. Um, let me see there. Yeah, there, there's just t.me forward slash unfolded. Is, mm-hmm. is the telegram channel so I, I i really like that um there's also another telegram called um i see ico drops ico news and alerts and this is great for every obviously initial coin offering um news they have some analysis on it so i also look at that a lot that's also just t dot me forward slash ico drops so yeah i spend a lot of my time on telegram on Twitter, looking at Coin Telegraph, Coin Desk, and then some other um, NFT research websites. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, so you've got about a semester and a half of school left before you become a proper contributing member of society. What uh, what can we expect from Mr. Jacob Koch Gallup come approximately what is it May, May or June? Yeah. yeah. 
What, what um, does the future hold for you when college is no longer a thing? That that's a great question. I mean, I, I I like to kind of live my life as in like going with the flow, being very adaptable. So I have no idea what the future holds, and I think that's what's exciting about it is I don't know what's going to happen, and I can just look forward to something exciting happening. Maybe going and traveling Europe and Asia, or just staying in LA and doing my thing here. I don't know, but but I think that's that's what what's exciting about it. Yeah, very good. Well, I, I know a certain crypto company that has already benefited quite a bit from having you around. And yeah, I know I'm sure that crypto company would love to keep you around. So at any rate, uh, you know, work hard, finish school and uh, and, you know, best wishes for the future. Thank you for sharing your unique perspective with us on how crypto fits into a younger person's world. I think it's a pretty valuable perspective for a lot of people who are into this thing. That's, uh, that's Jacob Koch Gallup. He's a market analyst at Token Metrics, and he's also a senior in college. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of the Engine Room Podcast. We are, of course, brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. Uh, do be sure to follow uh, and subscribe to Token Metrics on YouTube. Give this video a like, and we'll see you next time. Bye.